So the inductor is uh, kind of the hardest component to understand, so hopefully uh, this will help make it easier. To begin with, these are the inductors I'm going to use. So now, when you look at these, you should think of a uh, wire wrapped up in a coil, an insulated wire. And all of those windings help it create a magnetic field. Here's some other uh, inductor types. I got a lot of these other round ones, but also... A lot of inductors look like uh, green resistors, so if you see a green resistor, uh, it's probably best to assume that's an inductor. I, I don't know why they made it in that packaging, but, but they did. Uh, but anyways, I have these inductors from this kit. These are the different value inductors in that kit. So now these inductors, their leads are spaced enough where there's a, a row between them. So if you can see that I have an inductor where it's uh, one row next to the other I just twisted it sideways so now the gap is on this row these rows aren't uh, connected to each other they're only connected this way by turning it slightly I can connect one end of the inductor to the other and another thing to remember is these particular inductors have a core in them some kind of uh, conducting type core that helps it create a magnetic field because that's the point of inductors they as I said they're just a coiled wire they're a conducting wire but as current goes through they gain a magnetic field and the other material around them helps them uh, or hinders them in making that magnetic field so these are designed with the core in them to increase the magnetic field so now we're going to do a demonstration circuit, of course, and all this is is a, a simple LED circuit. We have a switch, and then connected to the switch is a protective resistor, which connects to this side of the LED, so the current will go through the LED, and then towards one end of the inductor, it'll go through the inductor, and then back to ground. So really the inductor won't make a big impact on this circuit, we won't even notice it. But at first it will slow the current down. It will keep the current from rising to its maximum amount uh, for a very brief period of time. And while it's doing that though, it's building a magnetic field. The magnetic field gets larger as the current increases to its uh, regular level. And that's where the problem comes. If we let go of the switch then, that magnetic field collapses. That actually keeps the current going and it doesn't care that the switch is now open it keeps that current flowing through the switch even and so it creates a little high voltage spark until the magnetic field collapses so what we do is we take another LED in this case uh, a diode though now we reverse bias it this one the long lead is towards positive the short lead is towards negative now we're going to put the short lead towards negative or uh, the long lead towards negative and the short lead towards positive. And what this will do is it'll give the inductor a path to discharge. Now it's going to be hard to really notice this, but when I hit the switch, that LED lights up. That obviously easy to see. But when I release the switch, and even when there's some switch bounce, this other LED uh, quickly flashes. I can see it uh, in person, but it's not showing up on the camera at all. So. What I'm going to do, I'm going to take some index cards. It also helps that when the LED is pointed. But uh, there, you can see there's some flash. I'll cover uh, with my hand. Now you can really see it flashes. So that LED flashes either when I let go of the switch or I lose contact for a little bit. And that's the uh, energy that's stored in the inductor. Of course, it's just a brief amount of energy. It's quickly released almost instantly. But uh, whatever current was flowing through the inductor, right when you release the switch, it keeps that current flowing. So now it's flowing from one end of the inductor to the other, whatever the easiest path is. Right now, the easiest path is the LED. So current is flowing that way, so it continues to flow through the LED and back to that uh, lead. So that's the basic principle of inductors. They gain a magnetic field and then they give that energy 
afterwards. And that's one of the dangers of inductors and other coiled uh, components like uh, transformers. They keep the current going. The bigger the inductor, the more current and the more current going through it, the more it's going to keep that current going. So it can damage switches and stuff. It could even electrocute you. So uh, this is small scale. I didn't risk getting electrocuted at all. But uh, that is something to be aware of. Even in a low voltage circuit, if you open a switch and there's a lot of inductance being stored in that uh, circuit, it just raises the voltage till that current gets going. And that may be through you. So you do have to be careful. But that's really the basic principle of the inductor, as I said. At first, current starts flowing. It takes a little while for that current to flow through the inductor. So it keeps the circuit current down low for just a short amount of time. In this case, it's not even noticeable by eye. But uh, then when you release that switch, that energy that it built up while well, it was slowing down the current, once that energy built up, current was able to flow freely. But uh, when you release the switch, that energy it stored in a magnetic field. And when I say magnetic field, I really mean magnetic field. If you put magnets next to it, it affects magnets. But uh, that stored magnetic field, it collapses. It keeps the current going for a brief amount of time. So it's doing the opposite of the beginning. At first it fought the current. And then at the end when you release the switch, it's pushing the current. It's actually forcing current to keep going. In this case, we forced it through an LED. Uh, even though, as I said, it stores a large amount of energy, the current doesn't go up, just the voltage. And since the LED doesn't uh, really resist more than 1.5 volts, uh, it just stops at 1.5 volts because the current can flow no problem. And we were only dealing with currents low enough for an LED so I can use an LED to absorb that uh, current. It's, uh, the current's not going up, just the voltage. And in this case, the voltage didn't even uh, go up. The LED let the current flow through, uh, no problem. So the voltage just kept going down.